Okay, we're going to go over some of our preference settings before we get into starting with the retouching. You can find them under the Photoshop pull down. Okay, here we are with the general preferences. It comes by default with about 10 or 20 history states. I like to keep mine at 200. That way I can go back really far into my history if I need to make changes. Some of these other uh, preferences you can change to suit your own needs. They usually come pre preset pretty much okay. With the displaying cursors, I like to keep mine at normal brush tip. That way I can see the size of my brush. I can see where the edges are. It gives me more control over what I'm, what I'm working on. We'll go through some of these other preference settings so you can see what they come set at by default. Th they're pretty much fine set at their default. You can change them if you feel like you need to. I keep mine pretty much where they're at. It's a good idea to get used to um, finding your preferences so that you can make changes whenever you need to. Certain images are going to have different requirements. Your history palette comes with sets of preferences as well. We're going to go over how to set some of those. One of the main things that I like to do is have it so that every time I save the file, it creates a new snapshot. That way, it's very easy for me to go back to the last time I saved it without having to navigate back through the history palette or without having to reopen it. You just check the box that says automatically create new snapshot when saving and every time you save you will have a new snapshot created at the top of your history palette. And at any point you can go back to that that snapshot or you can set that as your history brush so if you need to you can paint back to that layer or you can just directly go back to it. So here I'm just making some marks on the image to uh, advance in the history. You can see it's set to the brush tool. I just saved the file and it created a new snapshot. So now at any point if I click on that, if I select it, it'll go to the point which I last saved or I can set the history brush to paint back to that, which I've just done here with the on the left side of the snapshot, you can see the history brush is set to paint back to that state. I find it extremely useful to have my history palette set up this way because there'll be plenty of times where I'm working on an image and I maybe take it a little too far or I just not happy with the way it's turned out and instead of having to navigate back through all of my history states, I could just go back to the last time I saved it and go from there. To give you an idea of how this is going to work out for you, I'm going to just brush on this image. I'm going to pick a different color now. So now I'm brushing all over here and now I think to myself, oh you know, I really like the way that looked without the red. So I can set my brush back to where I was painting with just the black marker. Then I go to my history brush. I'm going to just up the size of my brush a little bit so I can cover a larger area and I'm going to paint over where I had that red marker and now it's gone but I still have the black that I did before that. The history brush and the history palette is really one of those tools that's going to be your best friend especially when you're just starting out learning how to retouch. It can really save you a lot of time to just go back to a state what you're happy with and start from there. So let's go over a few more of these settings and then we'll get into it. We've got a whole bunch of different palettes here. We just went over the history palette. This is the way that you have these laid out. It's called your workspace. Your workspace is whatever you find yourself happy with. The navigator, I never use it. Some people use it all the time. I find it a waste of time. So I don't like to keep that open in my workspace. The info palette is another one of these major palettes that I use every day in every image. It tells you what your actual readings are in any section of the image. These readings correspond to um, you know, how much density there is in that image of each channel. Um, so basically here we've got the, the marker that says RGB, that's your red, green, and blue channel. Um, if you're working in CMYK, you can read it in CMYK also. These numbers in the info palette, they correspond to the actual data that's in the file, the information. It's very important, especially when you're working with images for publication on a printing press. You need to make sure that 
you have enough information in the whites and in the darks and that your reds don't have too much magenta in them, etc. So the way you make these readings, you take a sample with your color sampler and you put it somewhere in the image and it will show you what the reading is for that specific area. Or you can hover and it'll give you readings across the image, but for an actual accurate matching, use your color sampler tool. The histogram, I never really look at that, so I'm going to dock that to the palette wall. Same with some of these other palettes. Color, these are, these are useful for designers, but for retouching, we're not going to be using them. Actions, we're going to go over in just a minute, so I'm going to close that out for now. Your layer palette is your main palette that you're going to be working in all the time. Um, to make a copy of the background layer, you can either click that box at the bottom there, or you can just press Apple J if you're working on a Mac. Um, you can change the opacity of that layer, you can change the setting of that layer to all these different options. The next palette you've got here is your channels palette. Channels basically show you the actual information that is in all these different layers of the, it's like a negative, you've got your red, your green, and your blue channel. Um, this information corresponds to the data that is located in there. So the red is going to be a little bit denser in the areas of the image where there is red. Um, that's the same throughout. Paths I never use, so we can just close that out. Once you've figured out which palettes you're going to be using frequently, you can keep them open. The other ones you can either dock to the palette wall, and they go up there in the top right, or you can close them out completely. If by accident you close out a palette and you need to you need to access it again, you just go up to Window, and you have the selection there of all of the different palettes, and you can bring it back up. Now, I like to combine my history and my layers and my info. Those are the three that I use the most, and everything else can go away. I'm going to walk you through how to create an action as well as how to create a batch action, which you'll see is a huge time saver. Doing the batch can help you flatten files all at once. It can help you pretty much do anything you can think of. So we're going to go under to the action palette and we're going to say new set. This is how you can create your own set of actions. Uh, we can name it whatever you want. You say OK and it creates a folder inside your action palette. I'm going to just quickly make a new make a new file here so that we can we can create an action on it. So once you have your new action set inside there you say new action in the pull down menu and you can call it it's a good idea to name your action what it is so that you don't lose sight of it in the future so we're just going to create one to flatten the image click on the red dot to start the recording and then everything you do from there will be part of that action. So here I'm making a copy of it and a couple copies of the layer. And it's showing the creation of these new layers. I'm going to merge them down into one. And then I'm going to stop recording. And here's my action now is to make several layers and merge them together. So if you click play, it will go through all of those actions there by making copies and then merging them. I'm going to simplify this by deleting some of these so that we just have one layer merging and that will basically be the same thing as flattening the image. And we'll leave it at that. So now if you press play, if we make a second copy and then you press play, it will flatten the image. I'll just do a little bit of drawing here so that you can see what's going on. The drawing is only on the top layer and the background is pure white. Now that it's flattened through our action, we have one image with black marks on it. Once you have an action made, you can run a batch action, which will save you so much time if you need to do the same thing to multiple files.